Hello and welcome to the Academy of Physician Engagement podcast. My name is Dr. Vicki Rackner and I'll be your host. The goal of this podcast is to help financial advisors accelerate their growth by acquiring more doctor clients. And in the COVID world, doctors need your financial help. I've interviewed hundreds of doctors about their money stories. It led me to ask the question, what separates the doctors that build wealth from those who struggle? It appears that wealthy doctors make fewer financial mistakes. In my book, The Nine Money Mistakes That Doctors Make, I lay out the top nine mistakes that can erode wealth. In this podcast, I'd like to share an audio chapter from the book with the number one mistake I see, making emotional choices. Mistake number one, failure to plan for the biology of behavior. Key ideas. Your financial habits shape your financial destiny. Managing your money begins with managing yourself. Managing yourself is harder than you might think. The past president of the American Heart Association was a guest on a national news show to discuss what's new in heart disease. This cardiologist started with the good news. Treatment of cardiovascular disease is highly effective. Then he delivered the bad news. The incidence of heart disease is increasing. The cost of treatment doubled from $200 billion to $400 billion in the decade that preceded the interview. He concluded that if we do not make a transition to promoting heart health, treatment of this disease will bankrupt us. The interviewer asked, why is treatment so expensive? The cardiologist pointed out that two-thirds of that cost is associated with hospital care for treatment of a heart attack. Yet a year after the acute cardiac event, only 40% of patients are taking the prescribed three daily medications. The 60% of patients who don't take their medications or fail to take care of themselves come back to the hospital with their next heart attack. The interviewer ended the interview with this question. What's the one question you want to see answered? This distinguished cardiologist opined that we need to solve the behavioral question of how to inspire people to do the things they know they should do to keep themselves healthy. This chapter is about how to avoid the mistakes that keep you from doing the things you know you should do to build wealth. But this chapter is not as much about money as it is about the biology of behavior. You will take away some of the ideas from the evolving field of behavioral finance that explain how your own thoughts, feelings, and habits around money contribute to your financial destiny. Is this a fluff chapter? Consider this. In both 2002 and 2017, the Nobel Prize in Economics was awarded to researchers for their contributions to behavioral economics. This may well be the most important chapter of this book. Further, I hope some of the ideas in this chapter can help you increase compliance among your patients. Biology versus Wealth Building Wealth building is not rocket science. Save, start early, invest wisely. Why then are half of doctors behind in retirement planning? Being human poses a barrier to building wealth. Please allow that thought to sink in for a minute. The nature of the human condition makes it hard to act in a way that leads to wealth. We behave in predictably irrational ways. If you manage your money by acting on your biological urges day after day, you will not build wealth. In fact, this is how people go broke. Your financial habits, the balance between your spending and your saving, as well as the risk you assuming when investing, determine the rate at which you build wealth. Failure to recognize and plan for the biological forces that shape behavior represents a barrier to building wealth. Born Spenders and Savers When you decide about whether to purchase something you want, the nucleus accumbens, a portion of the brain involved in reward and addiction, lights up. Conversely, when you are concerned about the cost, 
The insula, a part of the brain that activates in times of fear, lights up. Neurologists suggest that spenders and savers are wired to be more sensitive to one part of the brain than another, much like being biologically programmed to be right-handed or left-handed. Born Risk Takers Studies of skiers and snowboarders show that those willing to take more risks on the mountain had specific variations of the DRD4 gene. The propensity to assume risk has clear financial consequences. Illness and Financial Choices Overspending, seen during episodes of mania, compulsive gambling, and dementia lead to devastating consequences. When research subjects are put in functional MRIs and asked to make choices, it's not the cerebral cortex that usually lights up, it's the limbic system. In other words, emotion drives motion. The limbic system does not connect today's choices with tomorrow's consequences. Our animal instincts are all about the here and now. You may do some research before you buy your next car, However, when you arrive at the dealership, the salesperson's comment, you look great behind the wheel of that car, can lead you to make an impulse purchase. Have you ever felt the inner conflict when your feeling brain says, you deserve a treat, buy it, and your thinking brain says, let's save this to build wealth more quickly? Usually, the emotional brain wins. Squirreling away resources. Squirrels do not need to be taught to stash acorns for the winter. Their biology leads to the behavior of scatter hoarding or larder hoarding. Foxes, moles, and mice also save for the winter. Unfortunately, we are not one species biologically programmed for saving. Humans and Monkeys Lori Santos, a professor of psychology at Yale, studies the spending and saving behaviors of monkeys. She begins by teaching the monkeys how to trade tokens for food sold by human vendors. Then she teaches the monkeys that different vendors offer different value. One vendor may exchange a single grape for a token, while another exchanges two grapes for a token. Santos finds that the monkeys prefer the vendors who delivers the highest value, Further, monkeys don't save. They often steal from one another and from the vendor. What if we humans are subject to similar biologic forces as these monkeys? Our thinking brains know that we can and should be different than the monkeys by saving more and spending less. However, the emotional brain, not the thinking brain, makes the bulk of the day-to-day -day financial choices. How Biology Leads to Costly Financial Choices Here's how your biology undermines your efforts to build wealth. Immediate Gratification We live in a time of immediate gratification. Buy now, pay later has become a national anthem as well as an advertising slogan. I am a passionate gardener, and I love to buy plants. That's my version of the story. My son tells a different story. Mom, you're like a crack addict when it comes to plants. You just keep buying and buying. He now refers to nurseries as my crack houses and recommends I just stay away. Buying plants feels good right now. Spending elicits a release of dopamine. Still, my son has a good point. Procrastination The easiest way to build wealth is to save and invest early and let the power of compound interest over time do its magic. Compound interest is often called the eighth wonder of the world. You will learn more about this in the next chapter. Now, consider this. Imagine your freshman college roommate was a computer science major and went to work for Microsoft right after completing his undergraduate degree. Further, he started saving 10% out of every paycheck. You, on the other hand, made different choices. Instead of saving and investing at age 21, you took out loans to attend medical school. This is a prudent financial choice that left you with a different financial reality than your college buddy. First, you're on the losing side of compound interest as you manage your student loans. Second, you lost about a decade of earning during your training. 
and you launched your career with debt. You made an investment for your career as a physician or dentist. This is a prudent investment, even though this career choice robs you of the wealth building power of a decade of time and compound interest. Here's where biology makes things worse. After all the years of deprivation, you tell yourself, my family and I deserve nice things now that I'm making some money. The desire for immediate gratification, even though your gratification has been put on hold for many, many years, puts you even further behind. Burnout and Spending I was in a medical meeting delivering my talk, The Myth of the Rich Doctor. I stayed to listen to the next speaker, a Harvard psychiatrist who spoke about burnout. He talked about the evidence that excessive stress is toxic to the brain, and one of the vulnerable spots is the nucleus accumbens. This is the same portion of the brain activated in pleasurable spending. Could this be the biological answer that helps explain why many stressed people find that retail therapy is therapeutic? How Biology Leads to Costly Investing Mistakes Economists Daniel Kahneman and Richard Thaler, both winners of the Nobel Prize in Economics, know that investors behave irrationally. For years, economists made projections based on models in which ideal investors made logical choices that promoted their highest self-interest. They could change the variables, like tax rates, and project what would happen. Kahneman asked whether he could take the model and retrospectively predict the boom and bust. He could not. It was only when he paid attention to the actual observed behaviors of the real live investors that things made sense. Real investors made different choices than ideal investors. Kahneman wondered if there was a way to understand, explain, and predict what appeared to be the irrational investing choices of the real investors. Here are some of the predictable investing errors Kahneman described. Loss Aversion We will take greater risk to avoid loss than to experience gains. We hang on to stock as their value falls because we hate to sell at a loss. Hanging on to the stock usually results in even greater losses. Investors predictably take risks at the time they should be erring on the side of safety. Over and under reactions. Investors tend to behave with optimism when the market goes up and become much more pessimistic when the market goes down. Overconfidence. Investors tend to overestimate their ability to beat the market and underestimate investing challenges. Relativity. Investors see the world through the eyes of relative experience. Imagine how you would feel if someone gave you a gift card. Now, imagine how you would respond if someone gave you two gift cards and took one back. You have the identical outcome in each case, but it feels much different. Part of the human condition is the propensity to let emotion drive investing choices. This usually results in costly errors as investors buy and sell at the wrong time and fail to recognize the real investment risk. A physician said, the main thing my financial advisor does is protect me from myself. Your childhood lessons about money matter. Alex is a highly respected clinician who attracts patients from a five-state area. This leaves her partner wondering why she makes such irrational choices about money. Through their disciplined approach to saving and investing, this couple built an investment portfolio worth about $9 million. Still, Alex refused to spend money. They had staycations instead of the international travel Alex's colleagues enjoyed. They drove 10-year-old cars. When the refrigerator finally died, Alex rejected the idea of upgrading their kitchen with stainless steel kitchen appliances, even though they both enjoyed cooking. Alex's partner said to me, Alex has a fear of being a bag lady one day. On some level, she knows this fear is irrational. Sometimes I remind her that even if we tried, 
we would not be able to spend $9 million in our lives. Still, she carries around this money fear all the time. She's in private practice, and if she has a low patient load in any given week or month, she gets frantic because of the loss of income. I wish we could avoid the regular fights we have about money. Why does Alex, a physician with excellent clinical judgment, make spending choices that defy logic? The clues are in her childhood. Alex grew up in a series of foster homes, and money was always tight. As she thinks about her kitchen remodel, she is not responding to today's financial reality. She is responding as the nine-year-old who worried about whether she would get enough to eat. Alex suffers from financial PTSD. Children have a biological propensity to grow into adults who recreate their parents' financial reality with or without childhood financial trauma. They absorb their parents' beliefs about the meaning of money and the ways in which money works. It does not have to be this way. Jennifer said, I watched my parents struggle with money. It's like they had holes in their pockets, spending every penny they got. In high school, I got tired of having our power turned off, so I got a job and paid the electric bill myself. I vowed I would learn how to manage money and build wealth, and she has. She practices in an office building she owns and bought a home for her mother. Alex's dysfunctional childhood lessons about money helped her accumulate wealth but prevents her from enjoying it. Jennifer could have followed in her parents' dysfunctional financial footsteps. It's easy to spend more than you earn. However, she got the help she needed to create a different financial reality for herself. If you see yourself or others making irrational money choices, consider whether childhood money lessons could be a part of the problem. You feel worthy of wealth? Many physicians express mixed feelings about building wealth. One doctor said, wealth feels like a four-letter word. On one hand, they want the freedom and security that wealth brings. On the other hand, they have difficulties reconciling their commitment to service with the reality that those services generate profit. Your financial health impacts every part of your personal and professional life. Here are some reasons to build wealth. Financial security opens doors to professional possibilities. Wealth gives you more choices as you consider how you position yourself for success in the political climate of dramatic change. Financial security helps you avoid distracted doctoring. Money worries serve as a constant source of distraction. Just as you wouldn't text and drive, Similarly, you should avoid distractions when treating patients. Financial security helps you put your family's needs first. A colleague decided to cut back on her ER shifts when her children became adolescents. She knew she wanted to be there to guide her kids through that tricky stage of development. She also knew that she could afford it. Financial security immunizes you from burnout. Insufficient income is one of the top risk factors for developing burnout. Further, insufficient savings and debt correlate with burnout. Financial security helps you treat burnout. You may decide to cut back on your hours, create a specialty focus in your practice, or launch an entrepreneurial venture like writing a blog or building a company around a medical invention you made. Financial security helps you put the patient's needs first. You may remember the case of the Michigan oncologist who was found guilty of a $35 million Medicare fraud scheme. This doctor harmed and in some cases killed his patients by administering chemotherapy that the patients did not need for his own financial gain. I remember the hushed whispers about the orthopedic surgeon who was performing surgical procedures that were only marginally indicated because he needed the income. Financial security helps you leave a legacy and serve in a bigger way. The greater your wealth, the greater impact you can make for your family and your worthy causes you're passionate about.
Just do it. If you have been procrastinating with your savings, don't beat yourself up. Just do it. They say the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Decide who's the boss, you or your emotions. Have you ever known a family in which the children run the house? The parents will do anything the kids want because the core family value, I guess, is keeping the kids happy. Letting your emotions determine your choices is like asking your kids to assume family leadership. One of the most important interventions for building wealth is moving beyond your biology and making choices that are divorced from emotion. Make your financial choices in your thinking brain, not your feeling brain. In other words, set up a system that will make it easier to take the actions that help you build wealth. You will have emotions that will stir up impulses and longing. That's okay. You can just observe them. Don't let your emotions control you and your choices. Stay in control of your actions, regardless of what you are feeling. You don't have to feel like doing the right thing to do it. The Challenge of Change A New York Times best-selling author tells me why she has the same meal every Monday night, saying, I get paid to imagine things. Since I can only imagine so many things, I don't want to waste my efforts imagining what I'll cook for dinner on Monday night. Our brains are wired to put activities on autopilot so we can attend to novelty in the environment. Think about how hard you had to concentrate to make a left turn when you were learning how to drive. Now you can easily drive to your office while listening to the radio or considering the patient in the ER you are driving to see. Your habits shape health outcomes. The habit of eating healthy foods supports weight loss. Just as regular exercise promotes cardiac health, the habit of regularly saving 10% of your income supports financial health. Conversely, unhealthy habits erode financial health. To promote health, you want to replace unhealthy habits with healthy habits. Here's the problem. Replacing unhealthy habits with healthy habits is no easy task. How many times have you ever kept a New Year's resolution. Here are some ideas about how to make changes a little less painful. Have a vision of your goal. If, for example, you want to increase your savings rate, imagine what it will feel like when work is optional. Make it a multi-sensory vision and live in your thoughts when the going gets tough. Don't rely on willpower. This is a limited resource. Understand the triggers for bad choices. I, for example, decided to shop at a different grocery store so I didn't drive by my favorite nursery when I went to buy cat food. Create a system that makes it easier to change. Automate savings by having the amount automatically transferred into a brokerage account. Create a family rule that you will not spend over a certain amount before checking with others. Make a public commitment. Then let members of your community help hold you accountable. Know where each penny goes. I joined my son's powerlifting team celebration after a meet. I sat next to a powerlifter who is a retired state Supreme Court justice. At the end of the meal, she took out a pocket notebook and started writing. I asked what she was doing, and she told me she kept track of every penny she spent. She said she started doing this because she had no idea where her money went. She found, however, that the simple act of recording her spending changed her spending in healthy ways. Understand who influences your choices. You have read about mirror neurons. We are literally wired to connect and fit in. Online retailers like Amazon know the choices of people who are like you and who will influence the choices you make. That's why ratings are so important. Choose your friends wisely. Understand that you will want to do what they do. Know that change is possible. I have personally seen physicians and dentists who transformed their financial lives. 
no matter where you are today, there's a more hopeful tomorrow. Your biology is not your destiny. Your biology does not condemn you to making these predictable wealth-building errors. You can find ways to manage yourself, your own thoughts, feelings, and actions around money to promote your financial health. You may not be able to change the circuitry in your brain. I know that I will never get rid of the urge to stop at nurseries and go on spending sprees. Yet, I do know this. The more insight I have about my brain wiring, the more likely I am to make better choices. The more I can simply be a witness to the choices I make, the more likely I am to have control over those urges. Action Steps Ask your financial advisor to project your financial future if you maintain your current habits of saving, spending, and investing. If your current financial habits are not helping you get to the financial finish line as quickly as you would like, explore ways to tweak your financial habits. Consider these questions. What are your triggers for spending? What systems can you put in place to spend less and save more? What systems can you put in place to remove emotion from investing choices? How can you use this information to engage more doctors? Well, how about having conversations with prospects and clients about how their biology impacts their financial choices? I hope that you found value in this podcast. Please feel welcome to share comments or reviews below. See you in the next episode.